But most of our communities have extraordinary people doing extraordinary things every single day. All of you who have participated in this workshop are committed and do just that. But you all possess strong emotional intelligence, common sense, life skill and experience as part of your cultural activity experience and ability to continue to provide trust, confidence and respect in the young people that you work with. The social coaches are also diverse, not just in look and appearance, but in thinking. The currency of the social coach leadership experience is sustainable, credible and deliverable. It's a volunteer culture. The social coach delivers two hours a week minimum in their communities. They do so because they're recruited, selected and deployed for the community, with the community, by the community. That is the first and foremost root and branch of the social coach leadership philosophy. But as I've said, there have been many initiatives and programs where we do things to community in the first world, and I use again that word very guardedly, and then deliver it to the third world. Well, we believe there's a second world, and we aim to be that second world that works between upper, lower, and creates a virtuous cycle and ecosystem that is socially, culturally, economically fit for purpose. The pathways in your delegate pack. These are all the levels. This will show you how well thought out this program is. It's meant to be complementary to existing curriculum learning, either in sport, leisure, recreational leadership, or any of the skill sets that would be transferable into life, into further higher education, colleges, universities, any institution of learning, formal and informal, this program has a complementary added value. The levels are all there and show you the progressive pathway in which we can engage, it could empower you as a result of this experience and more importantly, the young people that you will hopefully start on this journey, on this journey. The values are based on global citizenship, rights and responsibilities. We talked about the emotional intelligence, social consciousness, empathy, resilience, life skills, common sense. But I want to go to the Ali Six core principles. Um, for many of you who don't know the greatest, the late great Muhammad Ali, the boxer, activist and global icon who reflected the African diaspora by way of his own faith and beliefs, what he was to suffer and encounter because of the intolerance of the times back in the 60s and 70s, but how he was to be able to transcend his religious beliefs into a global diversity of spirit. And the spirituality is the universality and diversity of the social coach leadership program. We are all one spirit of value of everybody, irrespective of what you look like, where you come from, what you believe in, what you sound like. It is all about that spirituality and diversity of equality that leads to the respect, the giving that we give so freely, the dedication of effort and the purpose that leads to the conviction of our beliefs. And by those beliefs, the confidence that is humble, bold and brave are the qualities that we look for in a social coach. Those are the qualities that we believe some of you already possess, some of us already aspire to. I'm still on a life journey that aspires to those six core principles. The skill sets, interpersonal, project management, you've got to be all things in the everyday world in which we live and react and respond to. Working with partners, communicating, making sound decision and judgments, promoting that continued example of leadership, the safeguarding, the responsibility, the duty of care. All of that in the project management, the interpersonal skills are all part of that really well-rounded global citizen that we believe social coaches are and must continue to be. I'm going to pause there because there's been quite a lot of information shared with you. I'm going to stop sharing the screen 
And if you have any questions that you wish to ask on the basis of what I've shared with you, if you'd simply like to unmute, introduce yourself to the workshop, and then I will attempt to answer any questions that may result from what I've shared with you. And we have a good 10 to 15 minutes. So please, there must be something you might wish to ask on the basis of what I have shared with you. I'm going to take it that only digital technology will be preventing you from unmuting. But on the basis that I won't be moving on until I'm at least challenged on the basis of what I presented and whether it makes sense to you or not, or the language of sport and the arts, which is universal, would suggest that you have something within that curious mind of yours and experience that you provide, that you have something you may need clarification on. Hi, Joe. Hi there, Imama, welcome. Thank you so much. My name is Imama, I'm from Pakistan and I'm actually a football coach and I do a social program in Pakistan in different cities for especially for the girls and the boys and the youngsters. So those who are like not, you know, being involved in sports, I'm trying to bring them to, uh, to the sports and uh, involve them in healthy activities. And uh, so it's not a question, but it's uh, just a comment that I would like to do. And uh, I'm so glad that uh, since I, I met you first time when I was doing Mandela My Leadership Program. Your mama, I and, know. Uh, you're welcome. The face <laughs> thank you. and the voice has now sparked a recollection in this very overexpanded mind. But um, welcome and uh, <laughs> clearly fulfilling the legacy of that unique leadership program. Thank you. And uh, since that, I'm just following your work and I'm watching every time that uh, how you're, you know, trying to serve in your community through sports. And it's a very, uh, and I just feel like that I can relate with it because the work I do here is also about sports. And there are very few people in this world who are looking, you know, to make change through sports, art, art and culture. So it's a very good feeling. Thank you. Now, Nimama, um, it'd be worth sharing with you, I'm not sure if you're aware, Bangladesh will be chairing the Commonwealth Youth Forum as part of the 2023 Commonwealth Year of Youth. Um, there have been a number of challenges, as you know, in your country that would have seen um, the ministers convened of the Commonwealth in January in Bangladesh. Unfortunately, the natural disasters prevented that, but the Commonwealth Year of Youth was launched in London at Marlborough House with the Secretary General, Baroness Patricia Scotland, um, joined by a number of other illuminaries. And that handover will see the Commonwealth Youth Ministers convened in Bangladesh at some stage in 2023. So again, that can be and will be one of the very positive outcomes of today because um, I now know who can represent the youth charter as well as your project, as well as all that you have witnessed and experienced to date. Thank you so much. Yes, it's actually very great. Thank you. Um, Apio, you've got a virtual hand. Yep, please use your virtual hand. Use anything that brings to my attention your wish to contribute. You'll come uh, as you unmute, you'll introduce yourself and comment, question, or point you might want to make. Hello, everyone. My name is Peter. Uh, I'm the director of Hope for Youth Uganda. And I'm representing the uh, majority of the, of the uh, delegates here who are also part of Hope for Youth, coaches. So I, I, uh, in the same words as Iman, I just want to appreciate the work you're doing and we are inspired because of your work. And exactly, this is exactly what we are doing back in Uganda here. We use sport, uh, music, dance and drama, which can be art and culture 
to motivate our young people. And as you can hear some drums outside there, there are kids playing and singing. So that motivates them a lot. So we want to say thank you. I've, I've now put uh, the names, the faces to the names. I've been communicating with Peter Raymond and uh, and uh, oh, someone else I forgot. Janice, Janice. I've That's always right. been communicating with Janice. So, so I'm so happy to see everyone and we are here to participate, fully to participate. And we thank you very much for giving us this opportunity to be part of this global uh, movement. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Um, again, very quickly for all of you, um, at Birmingham 2022 Commonwealth Games, the Ugandan delegation of sports ministers, civil servants, and leading VIPs met with us in Birmingham. And as a result, Uganda was the first African and Commonwealth nation to agree to the development of a community campus in Uganda. Um, that is why Hope for Youth are so important in them reaching out to us, but more importantly, what we will share with you later on in the workshop that will show you what can be achieved when you simply dedicate and commit yourself to not giving up on the young people that we are committed to empowering. Um, is there anyone else who wants to introduce himself briefly with a comment before we go into the real, what I call rolling up of the sleeves of this workshop? Peter, your, your virtual hand will go down, but if there's anyone else who wants to comment, we've still got a few more minutes. Hello. Hi there. I'm, I'm Moses. Hi, Moses. I come from Uganda, Hope for Youth. Good I'm to a social you. coach. Brilliant. I'm a social coach. I'm an artist, music artist. Brilliant. I, I grew up as a boxer from the, from the ghetto. But I, I, could not go, I could not go on with a career because the society could not welcome boxers. Though in that, in that stage, I lost my, my finger, this finger. So how do, we, how do you advise me if I, I spot a young boy who is talented in, in, in boxing? Because the community does not welcome a boxer because in making your career as a boxer, you have to break jaws. You have to break jaws of people. You have to, <laughs> you have to bruise them to, make a, to become a, a champion. So how do you advise me uh, as I raise that young boxer? Okay, so firstly, um, I'm aware from Instagram and Janice Argyle will be able to better inform you of a London-based sport for development project that was recently in Uganda, developing boxing amongst young people and communities. So in the first instance, we'll make sure we get that information and create that link. Secondly, the combat sports are to my mind, the most important of pastimes, socially, culturally, and in the mental, physical, and emotional health and well-being of young citizens and communities. I would equally need to say that, wouldn't I? I come from a combat sport. Janice Argal comes from a combat sport. Football is a combat sport. When they foul and tag, it is that physical contact that stimulates the mental and physical aggression and channels that energy. But to your que question, um, I have my eldest son, is a professional boxer and the European IBF cruiserweight champion who will be fighting this weekend. So I'm not possibly the best person you ask on the merits of boxing, but all I would say is I, like you, came from the streets. And when you produce a champion from your community and for your country, it's amazing how politicians and how those who decry boxing and its merit and use in society in developing young people in a disciplined and well nurtured environment can produce life citizens and champions for life, both in the ring and out of the ring. But these are all things that we will be aiming 
to connect you to, include you as part of a movement that will see the support provided for you. That is why I made reference to Muhammad Ali. His values, even his identity and his beliefs were not popular. And we've been doing this work for three decades and we're still not popular, but we're welcomed and appreciated by the communities we want to represent, campaign and advocate for. So all of these ideas, all of these reconnections, Imama, again, becoming a, an, an extraordinary and welcomed legacy of a Mandela, mild Kofi Annan workshop during lockdown, during COVID, but now already inspiring hope and opportunity. But um, we've now hit 12.30 and I'm always, I have a subconscious fear that Wi-Fi connections or IT connections would drop or we wouldn't be able to, uh, a raised hand instead of a virtual hand. None more yeah. comment or contribution. Hello. Welcome. Hi. Hello. Yes. Hello. David, welcome. Yes. Yes, please. Hi, everyone. I'm called David. I am the director and founder of a newly formed organization called Leila Gaubi Uganda. I formed it during the COVID-19 lockdown. Mm -hmm. I, I was introduced and connected to this youth chapter by our, our partner as of Hope for Youth Uganda director, Mr. Nsuga Peter. So we, our, what do we do at, at our project? We empower vulnerable girls we we uh, our aim is to empower vulnerable girls and young mothers teenage mothers to change their lives being vulnerable and youth we cannot separate them with the entertainment and the sport so one of our programs we have five thematic programs but one of them is mdd music dance and drama and the girls soccer so we we to, to to achieve our aim we, we 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 do sport and play first of all because these girls have issues to restore the, their lost hope through sports we have to they have to get entertained and the, also to achieve to, to bring them back on board that they are still they can still make it in life so we use sports and music to change their lives. And the, that's what we do briefly as we, we shall, we, we come to know you much, especially I had uh, Imam um, that he, she's one of the coaches. I, I don't know if she also coaches soccer because we have just introduced the, the, that soccer, girls soccer to our project and being a new game, others are just being introduced to the game. So we need to, 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 to be serious with it so that being a new game, they, they have to know that rules of the game, everything. So it's a, a task we have. Thank you so much to, 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 to allow me to join this wonderful program. Now you're welcomed, David. And um, I see you have a Canadian motif, which would suggest hopefully you're receiving some support from Canadian sport, um, who are as global citizens very much in the culture and philosophy of Canadian sport, very much brought into the Sport for Development for Peace. And I know they have a number of programs, but one of the significant reasons behind this gathering was to see, as I've said, how we collaborate, who we share resource, support, best practice. So, and I will always say this and repeatedly say this, when it comes to young girls and women, they must learn to defend themselves. They must learn to be able to inspire the confidence that suggests they're able to play an equal, if not more important part in the lives of young people and communities. But I would say that, and um, that would be more, I think, revealed as we go on. Is there anyone who wants to comment very briefly? Yes. Our executive yes. director of the Youth Charter, Janice Argyle, yes. would like to comment. Yes. Sorry, no, um, I just, sorry, I just yeah, yeah. I think Consular Appio's hand is up, so she's been up and down a while. So if she can now speak, that would be great. That was Peter, if my memory is not doing me a disservice. I've, I misread the virtual. Yes, this Appio. is Consul. Yes, yes, Consul. I'm here. 
Okay. Welcome. Yes. yes. Um, Consulate Apio. Uh, I work for a CBO based in, 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 in Lira, Northern Uganda, called mm -hmm. We Touré Gender Initiatives. And uh, we've been operating as a loose feminist movement in Lira. Uh, however, in 2023, this very year, we currently registered with the district as a CBO. And uh, we, um, one of our areas of operation is we work with uh, women and girls uh, to see how we can fight uh, gender-based violence in schools and within homes. And uh, yeah, uh, we have intentions of introducing sports and games, especially to uh, women who have been affected by gender-based violence as a way of helping them overcome the cycle and social uh, torture they've gone through uh, during the process of uh, gender-based violence. So I'm really pleased and very happy to be part of this uh, workshop today. I believe I'll learn. And after learning from here, I know I'll take and I'll take what I've learned and help also our women and girls out there. Uh, to come up with some sports activities that can help them, yeah, be active within the community. So, thank you so much. And Consulate, I've just seen you, so thank you. And thank you, Janice, for yeah. being absolutely interactive, aware of all mediums. Um, first and foremost, Consulate, um, this is something that will definitely result from our ongoing work, as well as our continued commitment to gender-based equality through sport for development, there will be a combat sport initiative. Um, I feel it very strongly, and Janice Argal Thompson will reveal um, the reasons behind it. Every girl and woman should learn to defend themselves. It is an absolute prerequisite, and to my mind, fundamental right in the world in which we live, and became a consequence even more, I think, as a result of COVID-19 and lockdown. But consulate, this is something that we'll be able to assist you with and to provide you hopefully with some program, project and future support. Has everybody else introduced their respective organisations? There are some hands going up and smiles. So I'm going to extend, as always is the case, another five or six minutes. But um, please introduce yourselves. Hello, everyone. My name is Jackie. I'm a student from, from Hope for Youth. Um, during weekends, we come here at the organization and gather up with our young brothers and sisters, and we engage in different projects like All Stars. Um, under All Stars, we are doing MDD, music, dance, and drama. So we go there and we help each other. When I looked into the core values when you were showing us and I saw the core values, I saw something um, giving. All, all along I've been having this thing of sharing. When I saw this thing, I, I, I remembered my, my, my idea of sharing. You know, we, we might be outside there when we don't, when things that at our hearts or when we have our talents, but we don't have anyone to share them with. You could look, you could look around your home and say that who can I who can I share with this thing that I'm having? But we could be like in a in an environment where you have all different talents and you'd be like, I'm I'm looking for that person to share it with me. So when I saw this thing of giving I, I thought of that thing of sharing. You know, here under Youth Charter, I saw that when we were explaining, I saw that you have that thing of sharing. Under sports, we are sharing because in the field, you can't work alone, which means you have to work hand in hand. That is what I call sharing so that you can win or you can work hand in hand so that you can proceed with that play. And it is the same thing as in MDD. You know, if we don't share, everyone brings what is in his head. I bring and you bring, that is what I call sharing. But most of the young people who are outside, they are lack people who 
to share their things, their ideas, their talents with. And it's good enough that I found it here. Thank you so much. No, it's it's the most important aspect, that giving. It's one thing we all have is time. One thing we all have is making best use of that quality time. But you've made a very insightful and very valuable and priceless contribution in one of the central core values of the social coach. Another young lady next to you wishes to make a contribution. Introduce yourself, please. Mm -hmm. Hello, everyone. Hi. I'm Shakira. Shakira. Yes, I did early childhood development, just waiting for graduation. Congratulations. Uh, I always come back here at Hope for Youth to help my young brothers and sisters especially in reading and writing. So I've been studying uh, assistant coaching and this has helped me a lot, how to engage with children, how to approach them. Um, and another thing is all about uh, netball. Because I'm a netball at my school, I was because now I'm leaving. I come here at Hope for Youth. I'm having a netball team that I'm, try I'm training. So I always learn how to coach young, young children or young girls. So it has helped me a lot to learn what I don't know. Whatever I learn, I share it with my girls here at Hope for Youth. So thank you so much for whatever you're doing. Um, Shakira, education is, whether it be formal, informal, whether it be morning, noon, or night, is the very heart, it's life education, it's mental, physical, and emotional education, it's edification. And I think you'll find the action learning scenario will bring all of this creativity, innovation, and experience into something cohesive and something tangible, because that's what the beauty of bringing all of you together and what still provides inspiration for us to continue to advocate and campaign, the very, very priceless contribution that you all make in the essence of being a social coach. I want to try and move us on because I think all that you're already sharing excites me by where the action learning scenario and the breakout room session of this workshop. So I'm going to share the screen again because it is now about just taking you through the next steps, the next steps of what the challenges that we all face um, I'm going to hand over to Janice Argyle Thompson, who will take us through this segment of the workshop, because it will introduce the action learning scenario. Janice. Sorry, I just had to unmute. Good afternoon, everybody. It's really great to see you all on screen. Um, fantastic that you can all be part of this workshop. Thank you again for signing in and signing up. Um, as Jeff mentioned, we have been working for 30 years on these projects and programs. <clears throat> and with the workshops, we set out action learning scenarios so people can come together and discuss certain issues that are relevant to usually where they come from, the area they are in, and discuss how they can make things happen for young people. So for this Africa Wise workshop, we've looked at what takes place in Africa and realize that there are so many young children who are actually out of school. So the action learning scenario um, that we've chosen relates to the sustainable development goal number four. Um, Peter will speak a little bit more about the sustainable development goals later on, which um, are from the United Nations. The challenge that we are looking at in sub-Saharan Africa is that there are 90 million primary, uh, sorry, 90 million out of school children. So 99.9% .9 primary school age, 33.2% lower secondary age, and 47.8% upper secondary age. So these are huge numbers of young people who are out of school. And, and what we find in the UK is a bored child is a naughty child. And obviously that can be reflected in so many different ways. 
Um, it is so important to make sure that we keep these young people engaged, equipped and empowered. We have to motivate and inspire them and literally get them doing activities that obviously so many of you are doing already. So that is amazing. So the workshop is literally for you to discuss an opportunity to develop innovative programs, systems and curriculums to do just that, to engage, equip and empower young people and communities in formal and informal education. So that is if they are either in school or if they are not in school. Um, it, you'll see on this slide on the right hand side is the Youth Charter YouthWise Education Packs. This is actually a folder and you have a link to this on your delegation pack. If you click on that link, not right now, when, whenever you have time, you will actually see that we have a number of education packs and these are free downloadable packs that you can use with the young, pe young people that you're working with. Sorry, I'm just admitting somebody. Um, you would literally just need to go to the link and all these education packs are there and available for you. Um, you can use them. They are action education packs. They are uh, mental, physical, emotional workshops within the packs. There's so much that you can do with them. So please do take the time to have a look. So if we could just go to the next slide. Um, if I can just inform uh, the Youth Charter panel, uh, Shanti Anan has a group who um, were an hour behind because they were working in a school and they're joining in their school lunch break. Um, um, just got, in case you've got some more people joining. I'm about to admit some um, some workshop attendees, which I think hopefully will, on the basis of the action learning scenario that you're going to explain, I think, um, Kishan, knowing that you're going to be attempting to designate names into their respective groups, um, Janice, I think if you explain the action learning scenario task and then um, Kishan, we'll see where you've got to and if we need to, we'll just take a little bit more time. But Janice, I'll hand back to you. Sorry, I think you might also just need to re-integrate um, Kishan as a co-host. I've just done so. Thank that you. That's already happened. Uh, okay, the task. So the task for these out of school children is for you to design an iterative education program using sport, art, culture, and digital technology that will engage children, young people, and communities in formal and informal education. So Keishan is going to randomly put you into groups. Um, I'm not sure, Peter, how many laptops you have. I know that I received an email where you actually said you had three scribes who would assist us in this process. So we might have to just kind of jig around the laptops a little. So within your groups, following the three phased approach, we're going to look at designing an innovative, an innovative education program. One, planning preparation. Two, the delivery. And three, the mapping, tracking and measurement of the outputs and outcomes of this approach. So I think it just leaves me, therefore, to invite Keishan to get everybody in their action, uh, sorry, in their groups. You will see also, please make sure that you use your delegate packs because that gives you a number of pointers under planning preparation, some pointers in delivery and, you know, details of the outputs and outcomes that you'll need to be looking at. Each member of the Youth Charter team will be joining one of the breakout groups so we can assist you along the way. You know, if you have any queries or questions, please don't hesitate to ask us. So... I think I can hand back to you, Jeff, to hand to Keishan. Thank you. And all I would say, this is where we truly become innovative. We know we have a number of um, IT and digital challenges. By the way, Avanti Communications, who are committed to the digital empowerment of the continent and continents where digital inequalities are experienced, have sponsored the Education Pack, the portal, and we will be looking to make sure 
that projects like yourselves are given the right IT and digital support going forward. But for now, we're going to see what we've got amongst us and make it work for us. I'm going to stop sharing the screen and hand over to Kishan, who I'm hoping will have been able to at least begun the art of the possible in designating you all to your respective breakout rooms. Kishan. Afternoon, everyone. So uh, I have been in the background working, getting your breakout rooms ready. So as it currently stands, breakout rooms are ready for all the delegates that are currently on the call. So as uh, we have mentioned, we will have one youth charter member in each breakout room. And we have kind of split the breakout rooms uh, depending on group sizes and people to a screen. So do not worry if you have more or less in the breakout rooms. Uh, I would like everyone to use the whiteboard feature. Can everyone give me a virtual uh, raise of their hands if you can see the whiteboard on your Zoom toolbar? Can everyone? If 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 they can't, Kishan, then we'll use if it, if it is then a piece of paper. The fact yeah. that we're recording the sessions, the, the 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 key is we don't miss the contributions, and I'm sure you'll have identified the scribes. Again, that will hopefully provide us with a further, um, should I say, back backstop in the event of um, whiteboards not being able to be used as we would normally hope or wish. That is absolutely fine. So uh, in each breakout room, we will be recording the breakout room sessions. So uh, do not be scared. It's just for us to kind of make sure we've captured everything from the breakout rooms. And I'll be starting the breakout rooms very shortly. Uh, there'll be a five minute warning to start wrapping up discussions. And we'll have a 60 second countdown when everyone will come back into this main conference room. Uh, the breakout rooms will last for a total of 45 minutes. So I'm going to open out the breakout rooms now, unless if Jeff has, if there's anything that you want to finalize. The only thing I would finalize, the breakout rooms, the action learning scenarios are about energy innovation, thinking on your feet, and remembering that we can lose a life just by going through debate, dialogue, discussion, with nothing realized as a result at the end of it. This is about energy, creativity, and as much as you share becomes the currency that becomes used at the end of this experience. It's a tried and tested leadership um, tool, so I just hope that you're able to do so. I'm going to hopefully have a roving role, Kishan, if it's possible. And where I don't see the energy, I will be a most unwelcomed guest. So I'm here to stimulate and challenge. But please bring all of your experiences to, a, to be applied because if we get the education of sport and the arts, cultural activity with the digital age, I think we come up with something special. So Kishan, to you. Enjoy. I'll be opening all the rooms now.